Hello, YouTube viewers. Welcome to my channel, Science to Technology. In today's show, Rocket Monday, we're going to talk about stock space. So let's dive right into it. So, what we are exactly talking about? We are talking about a new startup in this uh, space race. And this time, another millionaire who was like kind of behind the scenes uh, finally came in front. That is big funding from big players. That is $65 million from Bill Gates. And uh, there is something unique about this company is that the people who are working there and uh, their confidence has enough of oomph that uh, NASA is backing them, Space Force is backing them, National Science Foundation is backing them. Now be mindful, backing does not in uh, in this sense means money wise. It means wise like these companies are looking at it and they are like, you know, there is some serious potential here. And if they successfully deliver a rocket, they're going to use it. So that again, as a vote of confidence, that's a very good system. And the whole idea, the reason why Bill Gates is focusing on this is basically he wants to make a sustainable rocket, meaning a rocket that does not pollute unnecessarily. His realization is that more and more people are going into space and uh, it's a thing it's gonna happen it's a thing that's becoming a thing so might as well make a efficient uh, you know less contaminating less polluting tool for it so if in future we do not be like okay everybody fixed everything else but we forgot to fix the rocket and the rocket to use in future exponentially grew and then voila planet got cooked so it's more of in that range where it's like no this thing is here it's here to stay so we have to scale this puppy up also in terms of uh, its renewability and sustainability so that's the core focus from day one that's why i got such a big fund from bill gates now this company is strong space uh well, it's a very uh, small company simply because it has less than 100 people. Be mindful, I failed to find exact number, but uh, I have checked the basically uh, interview with the people working there and they were talking about like 70, 80 kind of system. So generally it's less than 100 people and their core focus is on overall efficiency. Be mindful, they are not only selling efficiency, okay, our rocket is efficient. They are also selling how efficiently they are making it, meaning how quickly they went from getting money to actually having actual testing injectors, actual uh, scale uh, prototypes with working pro propellant systems and all that jazz that's surprisingly fast and they have learned a lot from SpaceX and they realized from day one is like there is no point of outsourcing anything it's like everything has to be uh, incorporated in-house so they built a tool shop before they started to deal with rockets so they're like dude that's how they kept uh, iterating on injector design as quickly as possible they're like build it it doesn't work throw it away build another one test it works awesome move forward uh, performance not good enough, upgrade again. So they're very efficient on overall system efficiency. And they are using two fuel uh, blend options. They are going with methane for the base stage because be mindful while hydrogen is a good fuel, it does not have enough oomph, enough kilo newton to justify itself like as a solid person. Like you may, if you want to make a SLS directly work on only hydrogen, you may need five engines for it if you want to remove solid boosters. So methane is a good compromise. It does have some carbon dioxide, does have minute amounts of suit almost negligible but uh, it's a really good compromise hydrogen again no harmful waste product but it is one of those things that's only efficient at upper stages at lower stage it's like it does not have enough oomph or you have to have like ludicrously oversized stage one and not to mention uh, you also need a uh, re-entry re ignition so uh, hydrogen may not be good enough for that first stage system but in second stage it is wise to use it does give you a bit more marathon capacity so you can go in deep space or high energy orbits so if they're going to use liquid oxygen as oxidizers so completely cryogenic system and they have very wise mindset about it i uh, watched that uh, interview and they were talking about something very interesting it's like it is real that at this point in time, there are a lot of people suffering from uh, basically burnout in space industry. And these people are not something that you can just easily replace. But SpaceX became so successful, the NAM name itself became so grand that more and more people started to work into it as out of passion. Now that's great for company because company can keep exploiting you. Because you have to be mindful. There are like companies like we are working on the most important thing. Not really. The most important thing for you is your family. Everything else is secondary. You can be working on your ass off. 80 hours a week your ass off on let's say raptor mark 3 and what the hell are you gonna get at the other end of it money not that much and be mindful this could take let's say three years and you would have rarely seen your family like as in like in the time they are not sleeping or things of that nature so you compromise something that you cannot get back money not that much and in terms of basically publicity no all you're gonna get is like 500 page document of ndas so many people are realizing that it's not that like you know 
long term sustainable it's good it's like it's it's a good foundation to start but it's not something that can be sustained and elon musk keeps firing people at alarming rate even other uh, competitors like blue origin or uh, ula all of them are like dude this is too fast like if you keep pushing people at this rate there is a point at some point you will become the toxic company where people are like you know what I just got in because they had a vacancy and they're going to leave. And you have seen it, already seen it. Where do you think the people from Relativity Space came from? They came from SpaceX because once you keep the ecosystem there, from the people's point of view, it becomes so toxic where it's like, dude, I'm not sure whether it is, this week is my week. At some point, people are just going to be like, you know what, I'm out. And like, no, the best of the best of the best. That's good in practice, not in long term. You need some stability. You need something because there will be good days. There will be some bad days. And if you're like good days, you are uh, you are hired. Bad days, you are fired. Yeah, over time you will be like the best people will know that they have strong hold over you because again there will be some people who are genuinely that good, but majority won't be. The majority you will keep changing because again they, and that also limits their growth. So now those people will leave. They will make their own company because they are like, dude, if I'm working 80 hours a week and sacrificing everything, might as well try on my own company because maybe it works. And if I'm the person who's making the actual Raptor engine, maybe I'm good enough to make my own company. So the, uh, this company has a very good mindset about that, where it's like fail fast and succeed. They learn from it, where it's like, you know, there is no point of like, oh, we are, you know, going with safe and sound like governmental agency, though they're like, dude, break things as quickly as possible and do what it takes now this is a very critical aspect you have to understand uh, once the company becomes big enough it becomes bloated it becomes uh, mar mired by its own incompetencies in bureaucracy department meaning let's say there is a thing a new invention happened in camera industry company can literally have people who are engineer who are uh, who care about the company can scream top of their lung it's like company management please change our direction otherwise we're we'll gonna become uh, you know irrelevant we're gonna literally this company is gonna go bankrupt by the time it actually gets to the top somebody actually takes a chime and it's like ah. by that time some small startup would have come in built the product brought it to the market got successful you are become obsolete and then their response will come this has happened it's like why the heck do you think uh, these small startups are like so agile like they can fix things so quickly while other companies are like oh, we are working on it is bureaucracy there is inherent point like you are flexible when you are small you are bureaucratic mess once you are large enough so every company has to deal with this is almost like a natural fail safe in that's why no large company becomes amazing that's why like SpaceX itself was that small company. Blue Origin, uh, again, it would be the next thing once it, uh, they sort their stuff out. And uh, you can see Boeing, a large company, a giant company can become such a big garbage. Bureaucracy. Corruption, of course, corruption also adds on it, but corruption uh, thrives when you have bureaucracy. If you don't have bureaucracy, corruption does not last that long. So they're like, dude, you are, everybody is working in vertical line. So if you are doing something that you are suffering because somebody bottom you is like, bro, we did this for because it's efficient, but it's becoming a hassle of you. Talk, sort these things out. It is very critical. And this is the advantage why small startups are so efficient. They're like iteration by iteration. That's what dream big and then bigger. They're not holding back. They're like, and I like that. that. This is the only company that I know in like large scale thing. They're not even trying to, oh, we are making 100 kilogram to orbit now. We're going big directly. They are directly trying to go into turn the market. And that's kind of wise because small rockets are good for getting in early investments. But they are, uh, you know, what we call uh, sunken cost fallacy. They're never going to work from mathematical, economical point of view. They do not work. They are good training tool. That's why SpaceX built Falcon 1 and directly jumped to Falcon 9. They skipped Falcon 5 because they knew it's like small scale rockets do not economically make sense. It's always wiser to make bigger rockets. So they are like, go big and yeah, do epic things. So. I really like the idea of like focusing on people rather than just like new tech, all that. Like, you know, give your ass off to the company and company is like, <laughs> I'm rich. I'm the richest person alive. And then you're like, uh, what do I have? Now you go home. Now you're divorced because again, you never saw your kids. Your kids hurt you. And what the hell you have? Oh, you may even get back pain. Bonus. May have happened with one of you or maybe few of you. So even that's why they have stock option as in like if you are like small companies always do this like large companies don't do that. But again, what if you actually trust this company? What if you're like you're seeing everybody's pouring their heart and soul out and you're like, dude, you know what? I, I'm going to bet on this. Take stock option, competitive salary, paid time off. 401k, meaning there is actual retirement plan. Flex time. This is very critical. They are like, dude, people have lives outside of a uh, company. And company was like, dude, you are a worker. We you work until you drop dead. And this company is like, no. And their um, 
basically top brass basically they had a very good approach to it where it's like work as a, like a baton race meaning you work your ass off as hard as you can the moment you get tired you pass the baton on you go home as simple as that like do not not everybody is like running continuously everybody is gonna burn out it's like one by one you work as hard as you can one you're like i'm tired give your baton to next one there's gonna take care of it third shift will happen fourth shift will happen. like that approach is very wise parental leave health insurance flexible work environments all of that like they are focusing on that part so they can sustain in long term not just like oh we became very successful and after a while it's like dude what happened to this company they're laying down some wise foundation talent retention because be mindful the talent that you may think today is not that great tomorrow it could become legendary it has happened so what about the technology so technology they are going bold they are going virtual aero spike engine because you have to be mindful uh, the best way to return a ship is directly on its back so it has the least amount of air footprint so to say but why the heck spacex is not doing that again they have engine there if you directly try to do that the nozzles will melt off so fundamentally they are making aero spike engines so heat shield is there but here's the, where the heck you can have nozzle and nozzle to work efficiently in vacuum of space requires to be huge how huge uh, 9 to 1 is the ratio for example if you look at falcon 9 in bottom stage basically diameter diameter is the same as throughout the rocket but at bottom you're gonna have a basically size big enough basically nozzle small enough that you can put pack nine of them the moment you talk about the upper stage it has only one nozzle space the diameter is so huge here and that's needed that's needed by the mathematics because outside pressure is zero psi you need your nozzle to be big enough to drop the pressure to that level but be mindful like zero psi is to zero it's like you have to make it infinitely large so there is a balance point where like how big you can make the nozzle effectively mass effectively at some point it becomes like dude it's not gonna add uh, too much oomph to it but it's gonna reduce uh efficiency simply because the mass is too high so that's how big people make it but you are making a virtual system now your nozzle could be huge and that's why these companies keep talking about like it's gonna be the best space performing uh engine in vacuum because from its point of view from its uh, th um, you know fluid flow dynamics it literally has an infinite size nozzle so coupling efficiency basically how much efficiently you are dumping out and you are getting the velocity it should be good i mean like really good that's why this animation has that like you know cone structure virtual aerospike so gas would be trapped there and everything else is really going to expand like a vacuum nozzle so it's going to work and how the heck are they going to achieve it without having giant nozzles they're going to have 30 small thrusters or almost injector depending on how you want to call it they're going to act as one large one this also gives them gimbal without actually reading physical gimbal so from a Management point of view, this is kind of easier simply because throttles are much easier to control than having gimbals into access. So they, all they have to do is professional throttle and they have 30 points of throttle control. So that's good. And 30 points of steering and throttling also gives them precision landing ability. So if, again, SpaceX can do that with uh, super heavy, but they can't really do that even with uh, anything other than that because nothing has that many vectors of control. This has that and it does not have gimbal issues where it's like, oh, gimbling is affecting it. Everything is heart mounted, which also makes it far more resilient to shocks and g-shocks so that may be desirable and what about the heat shield that's gonna allow the second stage to land it's regenerative it's metal based it's regeneratively cooled like a basically engine nozzle like how the heck a combustion chamber in a rocket chamber does not melt away because it's regeneratively cooled and metal is very good at connecting heat from two sources basically you have a heat sink of liquid whatever you have let's say liquid hydrogen or liquid oxygen depending what they choose so you have liquid sink most likely they're going to choose hydrogen uh, they have liquid hydrogen here you have gg amounts of hot plasma metal can conduct it efficiently without damaging itself so that way you can really uh, dump a lot of heat without damaging the heat shield now are there consequences not really other than the mass penalty uh, it also has the advantage that if some crack happens which could happen you could have some issues uh, that's not gonna fail catastrophically all it's gonna do is like plasma will get uh, to the second layer and the second layer is the liquid layer of the coolant so fundamentally it it does have a failure mode but it's far more resilient compared to a ceramic tech ceramic tech cracks done go on buy go home and this metal regenerative system does have endurance where it's like i get this and it has happened in past like uh, especially with rs25 engines where uh, something injured the engine there were like a uh, fuel leaking in the engine engine was like i got this i'm gonna still work so that's what they are aiming for not a fragile heat shield they're like dude we got this this issue is robust and it can work continuously for many time because again if you're actually actively cooling it it's gonna last practically for 30 to 50 launches and their core focus is super quick turnaround after landing. The moment it, this puppy lands, of course, they're gonna give it some time to stabilize and all that jazz, but they're like, go people. Basically, how quickly humans can be around it is 
very quick and that's another advantage of using multiple small things so this is their technology it's genuinely unique it's completely different and i did not even thought of that so it's genuinely unique way of trying to achieve this it removes the gimbal hassle removes the complex plumbing everything is hardwired so surprisingly wise way of doing it assuming it works in space now this, that's the technology side. The other aspect they are focusing on is high cadence. Because right now we do not uh, live in an era where we do not have the rocket. We have the rocket. It's just that we do not have enough of them going fast enough. Uh, it's like uh, going from two stations and you're like train only comes once a week. It's like, dude, that's not fast enough. We want at least once a day. And if there is high throughput, you want like, you know, four times a day. So we are in that problem. We have the tracks, we have the trains. It's just not fast enough, basically not frequent enough, so to say. So high cadence is the word that you will keep seeing thrown around every time. And this is the weak link now. Reusable rocket is kind of easy. Making a reusable rocket that is efficient in turnaround phase because again, space shuttle was a reusable system, but again, the heat panel, heat tiles basically, they were so fragile, so tedious, it took exponentially large amount of money and idiotically large amount of man hour to actually refurbish them and be like, oh, this broke, okay. So note down the serial number and then change the serial number. Again, that's why SpaceX is focusing on hexagonal ties. So majority of the panels are hexagonal. Some panels, of course, at the wing edges and all that jazz, those are unique. Uh, those will require serialized number uh, production, but everything else would be uh, serialized to one thing and again um, you must have noticed like how hard uh, SpaceX is trying to make sure their tiles do not magically self-destruct but they always self-destruct and during testing what about happen it's that's the whole point this company is really against ceramic system and they have to de uh, build every system basically why the heck they are going with this design and why the heck they are focusing on second stage so much rather than the first stage is that's the whole point first stage is done it's like people got it. It's like, how the heck you do it? We have sorted it out, everything. And given the fact that SpaceX itself is on block five, which is fifth iteration of this, it's not that uh, wow kind of effect. Yeah, other companies are reaching it, but they're gonna reach it sooner or later. But other companies are not even attempting on stage two. If you directly sort that stage two part, you're going places. So everything in the chain that is working from start to finish is specifically focused on reaching that two launch per month category, meaning they want to push beyond that. And again, that was the dream that was sold for a uh, space shuttle, that space shuttle should be able to launch two times a month. What it got was two times a year. So that's the target. And they are focusing on medium uh, launch vehicle kind of system, not medium, like, uh, yeah, medium, you can say five to 10 tons. They have not specified exact tonnage. So what we can expect in the future, this rocket and all that just is, this is the only other company that I have came across that is working on second stage reusable. If there is other, please do tell me, but I have not seen any company that is even trying that second stage reusability. And there is a lot of competition in space, like randomly more and more and more companies are coming. So this is a good thing. And uh, they're not focusing on small launcher, which be mindful, it's a very good tool to get started, but really not useful. So fundamentally, I like that approach. They are like directly going big. It's like, what's the point of making a, let's say Falcon 1 and be like, yeah, Falcon 1, launch money, throw Falcon 1 away, build Falcon 9. It's like, why, why, why not just build Falcon 9 directly? So that's what they are doing. And they're true USB. Like they have something different that no, nobody else can. And you were like, what if somebody copies this? Like people have to understand what the heck they are looking at. Why the heck the second stage looks like this? It will take time and it's like somebody has to take a gamble, bigger gamble than them. Nobody's going to take the gamble. And by the time they have actual test data, they would have sorted many things that other people will may not even know because it's a virtual aerospike engine. It's like, we don't know how the heck they work. So only this company will be the one that knows and what will be the plumbing hassle of, you know, throttling 30 systems from one system. So there are some USB that they have that no other company can just like control C, control V. So let's see. So this was my presentation on this upcoming startup. Uh, hopefully you have liked it, learned from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst your friend. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show me extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.